right, so it looks like we got some breaking news. This just dropping like about an hour ago. This is a report coming from Axios. It says, behind the curtain, top Dems believe Biden will exit. So the movement against Biden has been a little bit disorganized, not super strong. And it turns out a lot of the figures, or some I should say, of the Democratic leadership are saying something different privately than they're saying publicly. And so the report yesterday came out that uh, some time ago, Schumer actually urged Biden to drop out, and he was somebody who was publicly supporting him. So this article says, Several top Democrats privately tell us the rising pressure of party congressional leaders and close friends will persuade President Biden to decide to drop out of the presidential race as soon as this weekend. So that's really like straight up imminent. It's as soon as this weekend. And I think this makes sense once we kind of get into everything that's going on right now, because pretty much you have uh, Obama and Pelosi and Schumer and Jeffries and everybody basically saying to drop out. Uh, generally speaking in politics, like you can obviously survive if people who are on the other side of the political aisle oppose you in terms of people. You can also survive the opposition in terms of whatever the opposition party is. You usually can survive and sometimes thrive. Typically, once your teammates are against you, you pretty much can't win. There's no way to even stay in. It's kind of like, you think about it like playing a football game. You know, you're like, you catch the ball, you're running down. Like, you can maybe make it through the defenders, but what happens if your own team turns against you and tries tackling you? You're pretty much screwed. Like, there's not really any way to make it. Uh, now you have, like, a bunch of people coming after you and they know all about you and everything, right? Saying, behind the scenes, the private message distilled to his bonus form. The top leaders of his party, his friends, and key donors believe he can't win, can't change public perceptions of his age and acuity, and can't deliver congressional majorities. The president is being told that if he stays in, former President Trump could win in a landslide and wipe away Biden's legacy and Democrats' hopes in November. I don't think it's possible for Trump to landslide unless you consider uh, Biden's uh, electoral margin last time to be a landslide. I think he got like 304 or something. Uh, I don't really think there's too much else that Trump can grab from getting like a 304-ish. Uh, I don't know if that's mathematically considered a landslide or not. I don't think so, but... Um, says the pressure to step aside as a candidate has been rising to intolerable levels, especially over the past few days. Democrats fully expect polls after the RNC to show a possible blowout that could bring down Democrats in Congress, too. I honestly doubt it, to be honest. Uh, his choice is to be one of history's heroes or to be sure of the fact there will never be a Biden presidential library. Wow. When the president's close friend tells us, I pray that he does the right thing. He's headed that way. So he is really like sort of uh, risking his sort of legacy here in this situation. A lot of people are going to review how they look at Biden. Uh, we were trying to tell people about how he didn't really care about, you know, politics and that kind of stuff. It was just kind of about his personal power in 2020, but we got just completely fucking destroyed in 2020 for it. So it's kind of crazy to just see all this happening now. Seeing a panic pressure campaign is pounding Biden. Pause. It has been relentless and coordinated. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer told Biden in uh, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware on Saturday, the day of the assassination Trump uh, attempt on Trump, that it would be best if he dropped out. Um, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a mastermind of the campaign to get Biden out, told him that he could destroy Democrats' chances of taking back the House. We're, all, we're told she's also worried about donations drying up. That's another issue that I actually didn't mention, is donations are actually drying up. I saw, I think, Katzenberg, uh, like a big donor, was like, hey, dude, uh, your candidacy is actually bad because we're actually having rich donors dry up. So Democrats are typically amazing fundraisers, like beyond amazing. Uh, House, uh, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries delivered a similar, if more subtle, message to Biden. Former President Obama has spoken loudly with the silence and his former aides trashing Biden in public. Bill and Hillary Clinton are doing what Obama's doing, so are their former aides. We're increasing, increasingly here at top Biden aides, including ones who initially urged him to fight on after his disastrous debate on June 27, 21 days ago, are saying it's now, it's now when, not if Biden announces he's not running. And so pretty much, I think that... Um, I think that originally I was going to say that the only way to penetrate him would be getting through Hunter and Jill because it seems like those are the only people he's taking seriously because he, his response to the donations drying up was, hey, F it, we'll do it without them. That was, that was his approach. He didn't really seem to care, but I think uh, that was because there was no concerted, clear effort. Now there's a clear, concerted effort to get him out, and I don't think he'll be able to survive a clear, concerted effort where... You have Hakeem Jeffries, uh, you know, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. When you have everybody coming out against you, there's pretty much no possible way. Um, 
It's saying, as we told you in the Behind the Curtain column 18 days ago, a Democratic official said Biden will not be dragged off the stage. The goal is to let him walk off the stage, but he wouldn't take the hints loud as they got, so it's come to this. He's forcing people who like him and respect him to resort to trying to shame him. Uh, Biden can't be forced out. He has a delegate, so no one can physically pry them away. He needs to do it by choice on his terms. They can effectively de facto force him out. If everybody comes out against him, there's no way for him to possibly survive. It's not going to happen. If literally every leader in the Democratic Party comes out uh, in a concerted effort to tell him to drop out, he will do so. And it happened in 2016, too. He was supposed to run in 2016. And honestly, I wish he did. Um, I, I guess Bernie probably doesn't, doesn't happen or he's weaker in that situation. But, you know, he wanted to run in 2016, but the Democratic operatives got him not to run because they wanted to all coalesce around Hillary. And I think that was a huge, huge mistake. Huge, huge mistake. Uh, the president told both leaders he is the nominee of the party he plans to win and looks forward to working with both of them to pass a 100 days agenda to help working families. So, I think Biden is doing two new and telling things, listening more and asking about Vice President Harris's prospects against Trump. That's why you see all the leaks about Biden being open-minded. He would hardly talk to naysayers a week ago. So I think he's he's getting into a position now where it's like, oh, shoot, like I have to accept reality here. So, so Obama, this is another article. It says Obama tells aides, uh, tells allies Biden needs to seriously consider his viability. So Obama has been a little bit silent. Definitely he sent that tweet out in public, and but I don't think I've even seen many reports behind the scenes saying that he's really doing anything with the race because usually behind the scenes he's usually doing a lot of stuff. Um, it says former President Barack Obama has told allies in recent days that Biden's path to victory is greatly diminished and he thinks the president needs to seriously consider uh, the viability of his candidacy, according to multiple people briefed on his thinking. Because Obama has spoken with Biden only once since the debate. Wow. And he's been clear in his conversations with others that the future of Biden's candidacy is a decision for the president to make. It's pretty fascinating. So he's been like, I guess not talking to him directly, but it's saying behind the scenes, Obama has been deeply engaged in conversations about the future of Biden's campaign. Taking calls from many anxious Democrats, including former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and has shared his views about the president's challenges. Okay, so it looks like behind the scenes he is pretty active on kind of talking to people and stuff like that. So he is active. Uh, he's just not talking to Biden directly. I guess maybe he thinks that that was maybe the healthier way to approach the situation. Or I don't know if he feels like, hey, you know, if Biden seems kind of like a stubborn, like demented type of dude... You know, anytime you have someone that's really stubborn like that, I think just like, I think sometimes the best strategy can be, hey, let me not pester. Let me let them just like, let me let them just like sit in and like digest it. Um, and then obviously Pelosi is telling Biden, you're dragging down Democrats. I think the article title of this that I saw on Twitter for Politico was like, Nancy Pelosi will not stop until he drops out. <laughs> and so... Yeah, so saying former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told President Biden last week that she and other Democratic lawmakers worry that he's dragging down the party an extraordinarily candid confrontation that came up with mounting pressure on Biden to end his re-election campaign. Pelosi also warned Biden that some Democratic lawmakers would start to grow louder in their gri uh, griping about his political weaknesses. Um, the Speaker does not want to call on him to resign, but she will do everything in her power to make sure it happens. Uh, the, this person said referring to Biden quitting the race. So honestly, from the reports, it sounds like Pelosi has been the strongest one to be like, hey, get get the F out of the race. It seems like it's actually Nancy Pelosi. And so now you have people who are Ber who were Bernie Sanders supporters in 2020 who were like the biggest K-Hivers ever, more than K-Hivers were in 2020. And so I'm honestly worried, to be honest. I was kind of lean Biden in terms of his odds of being able to win. Um... But if you bring Kamala Harris in, I think it's pretty much a disaster. I hope they hold a primary instead. I hope they don't just choose Kamala because I think she's a really bad choice. I think that once the uh, once the race starts up and the scrutiny comes, all that horrible campaigning that she had, all those horrible campaign instincts, all that stuff that all returns. Right now, her poll numbers might look okay because nobody cares about her right now, right? Once the scrutiny turns on, the numbers are going to go down. And I don't even think young people are going to be excited to vote for Kamala Harris. Like... You're really going to sell like a cop to young people. It's just probably not really going to work, right? She tried that kind of stuff in 2020. And they're saying like it's a different time or whatever. But watch, we'll jump in a time portal. Time portal. <laughs> we'll jump in a time travel machine as soon as it turns. Uh, as soon as she becomes a nominee. So I hope it's anybody else, to be honest. But I don't know who a good replacement for him is, though. But let me know what you guys think.